Our next speaker is uh, Dr. Schoenfeld. Um, when we were putting all this together, you know, he wanted to make sure I got all of his stuff right, and he wanted this M-A-A-C-R. I told him, you know, in America, we don't use that little a, we just say M-A-C-R. I said, you know, we really don't need any of this stuff, you know. You have some people like Bono, they just go by their first name. Uh, you have Cher. You have Elton. We just saw him in concert. He was fantastic. So we have Yehuda. <laughs> He's a rock star of rheumatology. He's going to talk to about us to D or not to D. This is the question. Thank you very much. There was a rock star like there who came to, to a house of the old. And he was walking in the corridor. And nobody recognized him. So he turned to one of the subjects there, who was 96 years old, and he asked him, do you know who am I? He said, I don't know, but if you will go to the secretary, they will tell you. <laughs> so <coughs> thank you very much for the introduction. Um, I know that I'm the last barrier between you and the dinner. And therefore, I decided to shorten my talk from one hour and a half to one hour. And um, I, I have chosen the title to D or not to D. I believe that it will be less provocative than the previous talk. And I was happy to hear Michel Petri in the morning recommending vitamin D uh, for SLE patients. And I believe, Michel, that you most probably prescribe it to other patients with autoimmune rheumatic diseases. What I would like to convince you is that you will take vitamin D, and I will show you that even my dog, the previous dog, is taking 2,000 units every day. So the question will be to D or not to D. So at this slide, actually, I have depicted all the organs in which you have receptors and the vitamin D has some kind of a positive effect. And you can see that it includes actually almost all organs in our body. So vitamin D is not anymore vitamin, is not anymore just a hormone, but as you will see, vitamin D is actually an immunomodulating um, agent. So you can see what happened when you suffer from vitamin D deficiency, and uh, we don't see any more rickets as we have seen in the past. But basically, we can develop the different condition here. And Michelle referred to the heart, to uh, the hypertension. There are studies about cancer and vitamin D and so forth. So as you will see, the Vitamin D may be used as a panacea for uh, different condition, even though at the end of my talk, I will be a little bit provocative just to wake you up before dinner. So what are the normal levels of vitamin D? So it's well accepted that uh, below 20 nanogram per ml, uh, it's regarded as insufficiency, and definitely between 15 or 10, it is deficiencies. That was not the normal levels that were recorded in the past. So why in the past we had higher levels of vitamin D, and now I can assure you that if I will measure the vitamin D in your blood here in, among the audience, I will find that 72% are deficient of vitamin D. So this is the level of vitamin D in Israel, which in contrast to Florida, is a sunny country. <laughs> and you can see that there is a shift to the left in comparison to what happened in the past. And even in Israel, most of the people are vitamin D deficient. So I want to show you what happened to me when I was young and beautiful? So when I played tennis, this is, by the way, an autoimmune game because I played here against Noel Rose, and I am ashamed to say that he beat 